Hello everyone and welcome back to Rick's Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to set the timing on a classic breaker points ignition system. They've been used on cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and whether you've got yourself an accurate restoration or just something you've dragged out of a barn, if you like digging into old engines, you're probably going to run into one with a points ignition. Dating back to the late 1800s, a contact breaker style ignition was the first ever invented. As time went by, engines got more complex, as did the ignition, but manufacturers still used breaker points all the way into the late 1970s and early 80s. A contact breaker is a small switch, and in order to understand exactly how important it is, you need to understand what it does. Its job is to tell the ignition coil when to fire the spark plug. If the spark is out of time with the rotating assembly, there's no way the engine's going to run. A standard ignition coil consists of two sets of windings. They're both wrapped around an iron core, but are physically separated to create two circuits. The primary windings are connected to the engine's battery, and the secondary windings are connected to the spark plug wire. The secondary windings also have more wraps than the primary, making this a step-up transformer. A transformer is needed because the engine's battery doesn't have enough voltage to create a spark strong enough to jump the gap on the spark plug and properly ignite the fuel in the cylinder. When the coil is energized by the ignition switch, the flow of current in the primary winding creates a magnetic field. On its own, the magnetic field doesn't do much, but if the current flow is interrupted, the magnetic field collapses. As it passes quickly over the secondary windings, it induces high voltage, which discharges down the ignition wire and fires the grounded spark plug. Once the connection to the primary windings is restored, the process starts over. Now, it seems like there's a lot going on, but this all happens literally in the blink of an eye. Now that you've got a grasp on the principle, let's take a look at the assembly. In the center is the governor wheel. It's bolted to the crankshaft and has the timing marks on it. It also has advance weights and a cam that operates the points as the engine turns. The points are bolted to a frame that has slots to adjust their position in relation to the spinning cam, and that's actually what times the ignition. There's a bunch of adjustments and screws on that plate that we'll cover later. When a live electrical circuit is broken, it creates a spark at the break point. Now normally the arcing would damage and erode the surface, but designers limit that effect in two ways. First, the actual points are made of tungsten, which has a very high melting point, and second is with the use of condensers. Condensers are capacitors wired into the circuit, and they charge using most of the electricity that would have been arcing across the points as they open. Once the points close, the condensers discharge back into the primary circuit, helping to charge the ignition coil and regenerate that magnetic field. Before you set the ignition timing, you'll have to set the points gap. A correct points gap is very important because it determines how long in an engine rotation the points make contact and charge the ignition coil. Too small of a gap and you'll overheat the points and burn them out. Too large of a gap will undercharge the coil and you'll get a weak spark. As you inspect the points, check the contact surface for pitting or uneven wear. Minor imperfections can be corrected with a diamond grip file. Be mindful to file the contacts flat. Uneven facing will result in improper contact. These points are actually in really good shape, so to get them ready for service, all I'm going to do is clean the faces of the points with a light scuff from some 400 grit sandpaper. An easy way to do this is to close the points on the paper and give a little pull. To check the gap is easy. All you have to do is rotate the engine to where the points reach their largest gap. Once you've found it, Check it with a feeler gauge. You'll know it's just right when you feel a little bit of resistance, but the feeler moves freely, or you can get a size outside of spec and make sure that it doesn't fit. To adjust the gap, loosen the hold down screws and place your feeler gauge between the points. Be sure to double check the gap after tightening as the points can move as the screws are snug down. Once they're all set, we can move on to the timing. Because the entire system is mechanical, setting the ignition timing on a point system is an involved but pretty straightforward process. The timing wheel has marks to show the point in the engine rotation where the spark plug should fire. On this timing wheel, it's marked with the cylinder number followed by the letter F. 
To correctly set the initial timing, the points need to open right as the timing pointer reaches the F mark on the wheel. I find the easiest way to do this is with a continuity tester. The most common design has a battery and a bulb that lights up when a circuit is completed. Most multimeters have a continuity setting that has an audible beep, so that'll work as well. But if you don't have either of these, another method you can use is shining a flashlight behind the points so you can see a sliver of light between them as soon as they open. This will work in a pinch, but it's not nearly as accurate as using a tester. On most bikes, the ignition timing is based off of cylinder number one, so that's where we'll start. Now this bike is a three cylinder, so it has three sets of points. A twin will have two, and usually so will a four cylinder, as in most cases, two pistons will be moving in tandem. First, disconnect the points from the main wiring harness. That'll isolate the points from the rest of the system. Once that's done, all you have to do is connect the tester to one side of the points. Touch the probe to the other side, and if they're making contact, the tester will light up. With the continuity tester connected to both sides of the points, all you have to do is rotate the engine until the light goes out. Then you know that the points have completely broken contact, and then check where on the timing wheel the pointer rests. There'll be an arrow somewhere that will tell you which direction the engine turns. In this case, it's counterclockwise. Now, this is important to know because as you can see, the pointer is resting before the 1F, which means the timing is too far advanced and the spark plug fires earlier than it should. To adjust the ignition timing, loosen the three hold down screws. Depending on the direction that you rotate the points plate will either advance or retard the timing. Once the plate is loosened, we're going to spin the engine until the pointer and firing mark line up. This is where the points need to break contact. Then, using the continuity tester, the points plate is rotated until the light goes out and then tightened down. Now the movement's a little jumpy trying to set it by hand, so the plate has notches in it to allow the use of a small screwdriver for a fine adjustment. The points for the other cylinders are set using the same technique. After rotating the engine to locate the firing mark, the difference here is that the frame stays bolted down. Remember all the screws I mentioned earlier? The other points are bolted down individually to the frame, so they have their own adjustments. Loosen the hold downs, and like cylinder number one, move the placement of the points until the light goes out, then tighten everything down. Once you're done, spin the engine a few times and then double check all your work with the tester. Sometimes the points can move as they're tightened down. And that's it. Now keep in mind that this will not replace setting your ignition timing dynamically with a timing light, but if you checked all the other things that I mentioned in my last video about starting an unknown engine, it should get you some fire in that old machine of yours. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for instant notifications as soon as a new video is ready, and as always, thanks very much for watching.